Okay, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going? Team here and um, this is BXJS coding live stream. So yeah, I'm basically now on vacations, have uh, way more free time. So I thought, you know, let's try streaming every day uh, during the week. Why not? And uh, we're gonna have streams for software development today on Wednesday as usual, likely during the day and on Friday. Uh, we're going to have BXJS weekly as usually on Saturday and then we're going to have gaming streams on Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday because there's a bunch of really interesting games coming out this week and we're going to try them out. But today we are actually going to continue working on BXJS website um, and because the last time the VOD got uh, basically destroyed, I'm just going to recap what I did on the last live stream that is basically a lot of people haven't actually seen because they missed it. Hey, Bakao, welcome to the stream. A nice day to you as well. So here's our plan, right? And uh, what we're building right now is this search and uh, deduplication for the BXGS weekly because we are like 40 episodes in and it is really hard to track which links I've already added there, which not which is, you know, can be annoying. So um, basically the idea is to use the Elastic Lunar, which is like uh, Elastic uh, Search, but purely in JavaScript based on the Lunar library to index everything and then search by title and by URL and see if uh, it's actually, you know, duplicates already or not. That's the general idea. And this is exactly what I did in the last stream. So here's the three uh, documents that I or three JavaScript files that I created last time. The first one is basically initializes the Elastic Lunar. It creates the Elastic Lunar index and adds the title and URLs fields. And uh, that's basically it, right? So it's really simple. There's like a load function, there's an index path, and then there's an index uh, itself. Quite simple. And then we have two uh, scripts, one for generating the index and the other one is for reading the index. So just to quickly recap again, because you know, there's no VOD for the previous stream. Um, I'm just going to recap what I did. The generate index is a very simple function, right? It takes the deer with the links, it reads the files. It's um, so here you can see that there's our read deer. I'm using the um, Highland JS library that is the sort of like Lodash for streams, which is extremely powerful and very like probably one of my favorite libraries to working with streams, to be honest. So it reads the deer, uh, which is our path, right? You get the array of links. I convert the array into the stream actually so that I can work with it uh, in lazy manner essentially. I flat map over the file name. I convert the file name into the actual path. Then I convert it into a read stream and map it into a file name and text so that we can actually um, get what's going on. I actually think I forgot last time to add uh, episode number, I think I actually did. So we probably should change that. Okay, um, then what happens is that once the, this is read, we flat map it again, we get the sections. So I've spent, I think the last stream was like two hours and I spent one and a half hour trying to figure out if there's an easy way to take a markdown parser and just split. Uh, so like, just let me show you the documents. So we have the documents that has the header and then there's a bunch of links, right? This is literally the whole structure. There might be several headers and each header has some links. So I was looking if there is a library that would allow me to, you know, convert the markdown in something that is more or less structured so I can uh, convert it to JSON, right? I spent like one and a half hour trying to figure that out and turns out all the JSON parsers are pretty damn complex. So I ended up just using regular expressions. It is exactly what I do here. I split the text by sections and then map the sections, uh, clean them up a bit. And uh, after that, I just use regular expressions to basically parse out the links. It's super stupid, right? So this is what this code does. It's like few lines of code. There's also some cleanups and trimming and, and everything, but it's, it's literally very simple. And um, after that is done, uh, so all of those results are flat mapped, which means that actually what you get on the end is a stream of those final documents, which is very handy because then we can just filter them to make sure that, you know, there's no empty ones, which sometimes might happen due to misformatted things or, you know, things like this, for example, if there's no links text. Um, and then we just add this to index. That's, that's basically it. Once we are done, we just write the index to file and that's it, we're done. Reading index is even simpler. We literally just load the index using our function and um, 
Then we just search either by title, which is default, or we search by URL, which is in this case, we give the fields boost. So in this case, we boost the title to zero, meaning it has no more weight, and we boost the URLs to one, which means it's the important one, right? Um, the thing is that in this case, when we generate index, so we have, sometimes we have more than one URL, right? And because of the way the elastic lunar works, we actually had to create one string field that contains all the URLs separated by the comma. So because it tokenizes them and sort of views them as words more than anything else, right? So this is why we search over the string URL instead of everything else. This is sort of the short recap of what we did last time. Um, I probably, yeah, so as I said, we should um, actually, we should, uh, what we should do is we should convert the file name into the episode name and put that into the document as well, because otherwise it will be very hard to tell which episode is it coming from and then later on um, figure out what the hell, you know, what exactly should we, uh, display to the user. So first of all, I'm going to just add file name over here. And then we are going to parse out the episode name, uh, meaning that const episode name, is gonna be our file name. And um, I think maybe just a regular expression would do because again, in our case, you know, we are kind of fortunate because we are the ones creating the data. So it's quite easy to just say, hey, um, so it's going to be slash, uh, wait, how do I, how do I actually write the regular, I'm, I'm like abysmally bad at regular expressions and I always have to use regex matcher or something like this to actually, um, check if my regular expressions work properly. Um, I have a few colleagues and friends who are really good at those and can just, you know, write it from the top of their head, but I never could do that. Um, I mean, I think backslash d plus minus slash d plus minus and then we want to capture this right uh, question mark until dots and then md so this is our i mean we don't even need we, we could just stop on this right so this is our regex i think that should work and um we executed on file name Here's the question, episode name result. Let's just do it this way, console log episode name result. Um, now I think it's gonna be from like the first result. So we could do, okay, you know what? Let's just test it. Where's my console? Uh, okay, nodes, tools, generate index. Uh, yeah, there you go. So the first exactly, uh, which means that we can uh, distract it and say, hey, this is episode name, right? And uh, that should do it. Yeah. Okay, there's something else there or processing. Okay, that's yeah, that's the expected error because there's some uh, unexpected formatting. Um, there is also an error in episode 21. What is that? I already don't remember. We had some errors because, oh yeah, okay. Because I, again, those announcement things. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, so we got the episode name now, right? And um, we could just start it over here, episode name. There we go. Okay, cool. So we added that. I probably should commit that. Um, git add, git commit, add episode name to index data, right? Uh, name and file. Okay, uh, we got that. Right, so now the thing is that we actually have to, uh, so we ge we have the generation of index. Now we have to tweak it because what we're interested in, we need to generate the index for the first x n minus one, right? And um, we then we have to take the last episode and check if any links from it are actually in other episodes. So, how do I do that? Um, I think we have to turn generate index into a link, into a function, into a sort of module that we export. Tooling is an important part of development. Learn that the hard way. Absolutely, yeah. You cannot underestimate the good tooling. It will help you immensely. All right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna turn that into a um, module. Um, and in this case, 
a new file so we're gonna call this uh let's re i guess yeah you know what let's just keep it at this and we don't longer need this i guess right um say module exports is gonna be links path and uh we're just gonna return the stream right but we don't actually want to write index all the time so we got to return uh how do i do this and each done hmm. let me think um started a job that and didn't do the tooling first had to do a lot of manual work on svg and database oh yeah that's the worst like when you have to do some database migrations or anything like this or working with a batch images there's like 20 hundred of them yeah that could be annoying okay so let me think um maybe yeah maybe we should actually split it into a separate module so uh, let's call it uh episodes to documents right let's call it like this and then i'm going to copy the whole thing and uh, let me just undo the changes here uh, no, no 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 not that much um, so kill the exports, put that back. There we go. Okay, so what we want to do here is actually take the episodes, right? So we take the link path, we pass, parse all of that, and then we return a stream that basically doesn't have this, right? So it's just going to be filtered, nicely formatted results. Which means that in this case, we could just say we don't need any of this i think so we got the links path yeah okay so we need the links path we don't need this thing here um where's my eslint actually i'm not sure is it even working eslint no it's not i'll turn disable uh, okay um right okay you know what whatever we for now we don't care about that let me just restart it after we fix the or rewrite this function right and in this case we're gonna be um saying okay episodes to documents right and require it from our episodes to documents and we're going to say okay episodes to documents and then we are going to basically replace all of this stuff so we're going to iterate each and on done write them to file right this is way cleaner and way nicer uh here's the thing we no longer need the index no we don't need index and index path here that is correct we do not need the highland here as we are not using it and we do need path because we construct the path argument i think that should work so let's just try tools uh episode to documents nice and our index is index json it is generated 1.6 megs so pretty good uh oh god i <laughs> I know that, that it is you, Leonid, but I cannot for the life of me read your username, so I'm not even gonna try. Hello, welcome to the stream. <laughs> this username, man. All right. So we got the index generation. Uh, right, so we need to... Uh, that is not how you write it. <laughs> that is not how you spell it. Okay, whatever. You know what? Let's not spend time on this. Okay, so we got the index generation, we got the document generation, uh, we were talking that we need to generate the index for the first, uh, let's rename this into generate um, full index, right? So this is something we're going to need anyway. And this is going to be generating of index for the whole uh, DXGS weekly, right? So once we're sure there's no duplicates, we're just going to generate the full index and we're, we're done with it. Now we are gonna create um, check dupes JS, for example, right? And I'm gonna copy everything from here for now. And uh, what we are going to do is, right, once again, we're gonna create the index. We are uh, we don't care about the index path in this case. And uh, here's what we are going to do. Um, I think we actually have to change the episodes to documents function. Yes, because uh right so this is what we want to extract actually um it's um tu -tu 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 -tu, let me think so because we actually want to pass in the array of um array of files right because in this case in, in normal case we just want to read everything 
And in case where we want to check for duplicates, we want to read everything minus one. So okay, in this case, this is gonna be uh, um, path. Okay, how do I do this properly? Let me think. What would be the best way? Uh, got the links path. This is the path. This is the array. I mean, I guess we could just pass some modifier. Um, yeah, um, maybe, maybe this would be the easiest way. So we do this and then we just say, here's the settings and it's gonna be by default assigned so that, you know, even if you just call it the old way, it's still gonna work. And then we're gonna say array, uh, array mods and it's by default gonna be a function uh, const, uh, come on, const default array mod gonna be array and it's gonna return itself, right? All the array, there we go. Okay, so basically in this case, it's gonna be default, um, come on, array mods, right? So we're gonna apply this and theoretically, all right, I actually screwed up a bit because this should be links path, right? Okay, uh, so now if I remove the index and we run node tools generate full index, we got an error, FS is undefined. Where exactly is FS undefined? I forgot to add it, no, it is here. Where is FS? Oh, because we don't have FS here. Okay, right, FS require FS, there we go. Um, let me just reformat this a bit. And uh, now we actually work, save the index. Okay, cool, so this now works. Now we're interested in uh, modified. Uh, okay, so we need the links path and now we need to pass the array mods. And in our case, array mods is gonna be, we're gonna take an array and we're gonna return an array. And um, now I forget, MDN array. So we want, was it slice I think, right? The slice is the method that returns stuff. Ray on MDN, yeah, there you go. And uh, is it slice, slice or splice? I'm always confusing those two because one of them mutates array and the other one returns. Okay, so it is slice, begin to end. So slice from zero to array length minus one. Uh, no, minus two actually, right? So it is gonna be begin, end, and not included. So minus one, I think. Um, right, let us check. Uh, do, 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 do. How do we do this? I think we can just console log here because this is the best way to debug, of course, right? Um, const results and return a bit, return results just to make sure that, you know, for, for the sake of my sanity, I think that should be correct. Um, and we're gonna console log result and array and let's check. So if we run nodes, uh, tools, check dupes. And there is, okay, again, FS non-defined. So we're gonna, no, 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 not this. We're gonna copy FS over here. Come on. Uh, index path, oh, right. We are not gonna write the index. Uh, and I guess successfully generated index is what I wanna say. But theoretically we should, uh, no, it actually doesn't log anything. Yeah. We're running check dupes, right? So where's my console log? Array mod, array mod, yes. That is curious. I mean, it should be executed, right? Oh, God, <laughs> I'm an idiot, of course, right? That, 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 this is what we want to run. There we go, okay, so we got 37 here and 38 here, so okay, I was correct. Just, just making sure, you know, I'm not going insane. Uh, because those bugs are the worst. If you like, don't check it first and then gonna try, you know, spend half an hour figuring out what the hell is wrong. All right, so this is gonna generate the index that is uh, correct for the first uh, n minus one documents, right? Then we actually wanna parse the last document. So I think we need to extract this parsing into a separate function, um, right? So I'm gonna change that. 
uh, folder, let's call it folder to documents, right? Documents, and we got to change the things here. So this is going to be folder to documents, this is going to be folder to documents, right? And like this, okay, and now we need another method, it is going to be exports file to documents, right? Documents, and it's going to be file path. Um, or I guess, um, do you want a file path or do you want a file name or like file object? I guess it's going to be like file object, right? So the one that we have here. And in this case, it is going to take the or I guess file object. No, nah, okay, well, let me let me think for a second. So what we want to do is we want to have this thing, right? Um, we got the file we this is the file. So we can actually we can probably use the same format, right? And it's gonna be okay. Uh, it's gonna take split sections Do this. And this is gonna be this thing and then we are gonna flat map and filter. Okay, so we want actually all of that stuff, right? This is going to make I think this is going to make code a bit nicer. So we're going to map it and then we're going to flat map it into the text and file name. Uh, section replace what? Text file name. So where's the Oh, yeah. Okay. So this this is the text section. Okay, cool. The, I think that should be exactly what I think it would. And then we flat map that stuff into um, into our exports file to documents right? and then file. I think that should work. Unless I screwed something up that should uh, effectively do what we want it to do. Generate full index. Okay, uh, 1.6 megs. And uh, just to be sure, let's run the read index. Um, that does not output anything. Why is it not outputting anything? Because I'm not calling anything. Okay, uh, find in titles. Let's search for Google. What will use default configuration? Wait, what? File in titles, user index. Uh, what is happening now? Loading, yeah, so this seems Oh, because I am not logging anything. Uh, console log. Uh, let me just finish this and I will read the chat. Okay, so this seems to be working just fine. So we're good. Cool. Um, any tips on moving code around? I always fail to see if I took a whole bracket or not. Uh, not really, I always screw that up as well. So <laughs> I'm the worst person to ask about that because I always um, screw up my stuff. You know, it's like, uh, I guess the only tip would be to have like integration tests that, you know, will tell you if you broke everything. Um, right, I wanted to refresh the whole thing. Um, reload window, there we go. Can I have my ESLint working now, please? No, what? No ESLint configuration. Um, oh, wait, what? How is there no ESLint configuration? I thought I had it. Okay, you know what, we can do this. I think I have it in my ESLint, no. Dot files, ESLint, it should be somewhere. No, okay. All right, whatever. I can work without that. Um, or there is disable ESLint, ESLint init. Oh no, it, it does work. So it just complains that there is no rules. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't need all the rules. Right, so we got file the documents, we got, again, that returns the stream, we got the folder documents working. All right, so we generate this, this stream, right? And we create the index and then once done, I wonder if I can, um, let me think. So we, what we need to do is we need to take this index now and uh, I guess first we need to generate the um, okay, you know what we can do? Wait a second. Um, hey, it's good squid. Welcome to the stream. So once we are done with this, we can actually convert it. Uh, where's the Highland JS? I need Highland J uh, Highland JS. We can convert it to I think there is a promise method like to promise or something. I remember there was two array for sure. 
But yeah, there you go. So we can say to promise, we can await it. Promise, promise. Uh, do you have to provide that promise creator? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, so we can, yeah, so let's create the main function It's gonna be called run, right? So it's gonna be a sync function. And two, 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 two. So instead of doing this, we're gonna say, um, await folder each add to index. I guess we can actually just simplify it to one liner. I think that should work, right? There we go. Uh, maybe that is a bit too long for the streaming screen because it's typically smaller and font is larger, right? But uh, I think, oh, right, I forgot to promise. Promise, there we go. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you, Prettier. That was helpful. And in this case, we can just run it, right? So now that should work. Uh, check dupes. Nope. That doesn't work. Uh, oh, right. I forgot to say create promise promise. There we go. Why not default to like default promise? That will be way handier. But okay, cool. So um, this works. We generate the index, right? So this will generate the index. Now we need to await, um, there was folder to documents and we also had file to documents, right? And we also need that last episode name, which means we have to read the files ours or read the deer ourselves. So I guess we're just gonna copy this um, functions from here. I guess I could restructure this here as well because this just looks nicer. Uh, read dear read file. Uh, do we need read file? Hell if I remember. We're gonna see in a second. All right, so we are gonna await read dear, right? And this is gonna be a links path. So it's gonna return us files. And in this case, we are gonna say const last file is gonna be files slice um, files length minus one. Right, and um, this actually should, oh, I we don't even need to slice anything. What am I doing? I can just pop it, right? Console log last file. I am, so I host a BXS weekly podcast that is basically fresh, you know, the best news of the week from the JavaScript side. And um, the way it works is that I have this repository with uh, markdown files and each markdown file is a collection of links. And uh, it's becoming, it's now like 38 episodes in and it's becoming really hard to track which articles and which demos and libraries I've already covered and which not. So I'm doing the script that will tell me if I committed any duplicates. This is the gist of it. Okay, uh, so we get this and this. Let's try check dupes. Okay, so we got the, um, we got this, this is working. We got the, blah, 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 blah. Perfect. <laughs> we got the last file thing. So we need now to run the file to documents. Takes text and file name. Okay, so we need to get this text, meaning that we have to actually... All right, so how do I... Uh... I guess maybe we extract this into function too. So... Um, let me see, exports file to something. We're gonna see in a second. And it's gonna be file name, right? Are you gonna use the search function to say user wants to know in which episodes? Yes, we are gonna use this index later on in the client side as in, in the website itself so that user can search for the whole files and documents and everything. So that's also the use case file to uh, um, content stream, let's just call it this way, I guess. No, I guess file to con, yeah, file to content, let's put it this way. All right, so here we can flat map uh, file path, we're gonna be file to, no, I guess export file to content, file path, right? Okay, so we did this, which means that here we can say file to content. And this could be um, file to contents, right? Last file. This is gonna return a stream that will have the contents, which means we can 
flat map over it the content and then we can say file to documents right content uh, yes then no thank you very much that is not what i wanted to do and um let's just do this await and say to promise right um right promise here promise then Okay, and uh, let's just check that it actually works. And what do we actually get back? Because hell if I remember that. Okay, we get the error because I probably links path is not defined. Uh, what is links path? Links path is should be passed there, I guess. Okay, yeah, so we need file path and links path, right? file name and link pass there we go okay and then in this case it's going to be file and uh, links path there we go okay uh, we got a different error right now to promise called on stream emitting multiple values okay um it's going to emit the bunch of values i guess um we can just do this each so it's going to basically emit the documents, right? So we don't actually need to promise. We can just console log the documents here to check doc, right? Just see what we get back. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. Uh, ID category um, no, 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 episode. Yeah, perfect. So we got exactly what we want. And now we just need to check if any of those are in the index already. How can you get autocomplete without type definitions? Uh, I mean, this is the TypeScript in IntelliSense. It's amazing. And it's basically, it sort of builds the um, definitions for you. So this is like one of the killer features of VS Code for me. The TypeScript actually reasons about your code base for you and makes those auto suggestions automatically, which is just incredible. This was one of the features that essentially sold me on using VS Code instead of Atom um, at a time like, you know, two years ago, I guess. All right, so we got the document and now what we have to do is we have to actually, we need to search the index now, right? So we got this read index thing and uh, I guess we just say exports find in titles and exports uh, find in URL, uh, exports find in URLs, right? So we export those things. And now we are gonna say const um, require from read index and it's gonna be find in titles. Yeah, as you can see here, you know, it does auto suggestion just because I exported it. So it's, it's kind of neat. Right, so we got the docs which have title and URLs. Um, the URLs, I guess we should, no, I mean, we could, we, we could probably just search, right? So find in titles, doc title, on stress and um, let's, let's call it title res and const uh, URLs res. Gonna be find in URLs, doc URLs, right? And um, just log title res, yeah, title res, and URLs res. There we go. Okay, so this should theoretically log. Uh, there is a lot of them. So we are actually um, right. Okay, we also need to log the document itself because otherwise it's going to be very hard. And we also, I'm going to slice first two results because I don't think that. Um, Having more is basically makes sense because you know, if it's a duplicate, then it's gonna be on top of the list. So I got the document, you wanna stay relevant. Uh, oh, why, why is it in episode 38? Didn't we, remote search, wait a second. I am confused now. Why are you in the index? Results, right? So we got this console log. Results, return results, um, just a second. It should not be in the index. Why is it getting found? Right, so we got the array modes. Um, I can just uh, return. Um, I mean, for now it just returns the same episode 38, which is like uh, weird because it should not be in there. So we got results and we got array, which is, yes, this and result is 
up to 37. So why is it getting, why is it in the index? Oh, because the, oh, I'm an idiot, right? This is why it's in the index, right? Because we are, it's probably reading it from the, yeah, okay. Right, I am doing it all wrong because my find an index function actually use the index loaded from the, oh God, it's loaded from the hard drive. Um, or something. Uh, yeah, good luck with your work. See you around. Um, you are more than welcome to come to the streams as usual, man. All right. Uh, cool. So let me think. Uh, we don't need load index here. So we're going to make them ubiquitous. And we're actually going to make it this way. We're going to pass in a title. I'm going to pass in the index as a parameter, right? URL index. Uh, there you go. Okay. So now if we go say doc title and here we say index. This is what we want, right? I'm not even sure we need that load index function. So in theory, it now should return. Uh, oh, right, I forgot to kill the return here. And da, 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 we can kill this again. The question, what do you use to check the dupes, the, tit uh, the title and the URLs? So both, um, searching by first the title, as you can see here, and then by URLs to make sure that it actually is, um, what do you mean index is undefined? Wait a second. Read index three. A oh, oh, I guess because. Oh yeah, right. Okay, I'm. Um, I mean, I just want to be thorough and check by both because you know this might be. It might be a case when I submit something with the same URL but a different title because you know I don't. I I don't for some reason. I'm not <laughs> not sure that's gonna happen, but you know just to be sure, I'm gonna double check. Okay, I think that should fix it. Let's see. There we go. Okay, uh, so we now got some matches, but they're obviously wrong, right? Both by title and by URL. So what we want now is, I guess, something like Levenstein distance. Uh, I think it was like fast Levenstein on PM or something. Levenstein. So what happens when you need to add like the same library used in the previous episode that got rewrote? Um, I'm gonna add the release. So I typically when there's something that is significantly rewritten or updated, I usually put it into releases section. I already done this once and I put uh, the latest release tag URL, which is quite different. So that should not be a match. Okay, there is Levenstein and Fast Levenstein two years ago, JS Levenstein. I think fast Levenstein last time I used it was quite good. So we're going to go with that. Um, yes, thank you very much. I am gonna npm install fast Levenstein. And I'm going to just copy the example from here and be like, yep, distance. So we want, I mean, we want to allow some distance, but not much, right? Um, const Levenstein distance. Uh, da, 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 da. And um, how do we do this? So const we want title res title res map. Uh, so we're gonna map the results into result type uh, into distance, right? So we're gonna take the take the distance and be like, okay. So in first we're gonna be doc title. And here it's going to be result title, right? So we're going to map it to Levenstein distance and then filter by, I guess in this case, we don't actually care about slice that much because we're going to map it and uh, do the Levenstein distance anyway. So it's going to be distance. And we're going to have, we want to filter by distance that is smaller than three symbols, I guess, maybe four, I, I don't know, let's try three symbols, const close title res, right? Let's call it this way. And uh, we're gonna log close title res and the same for URLs. Close URLs res, uh, this is gonna be URLs res, and this is gonna be Levenstein get doc URLs. Rest URLs, so same again, I, I guess for URLs, we could allow more leeway, like five symbols. Um, close URLs rest, right? There we go, okay, so theoretically, we should now get, oh, 
That is not what I wanted to execute, but okay, we can wait a bit. Levenstein is this thing I found in database back in PHP. I mean, Levenstein formula is basically distance and symbols between two strings. It's very straightforward. There you go. So we have um, everything is basically empty, which is exactly what it should be. So what we now for testing purposes, right? So this is correct, right? So I, I've, I've done the manual checks so far, so there should not be any duplicates. Um, but uh, so we got the distances, we filter them and then const match. We basically say close title rest length plus close URL things length. Console log doc match. Let's do it this way. So theoretically, we should see. Um, I guess let's just say doc title. The oh, um, uh, title. There we go. That should be a bit more concise. User configuration parse failed will be default configuration. That is whatever. I don't need those warnings. Right. So it's all nice and empty. We got one match for magic greed. Uh, right. Because actually for magic greed. Okay. So if let's do it this way, if match larger than zero, we are going to say console log title. Um, hmm. How do I, why you, you can use it on Japanese. I mean, it's a very simple function, but it should work on all the languages. It basically will give you distance in, you know, the hieroglyphical strings. So of course in Japanese, there's like, what they have like three alphabets or something. So if it's the same word written in different alphabets, you're going to get the large distance obviously, but uh, it still will work. So it's, it's a very straightforward thing. Okay, so let me think. Um, so we actually what we want to do is we want to map it into a bit more complex thing. Let me think. Uh, so we want to map it into an object that will have um, distance, right? And it will have, uh, I guess, everything else basically like this. And then uh, nope, there we filter it by large distances. There we go. Okay, so this is what we want to do, I guess. Again, distance. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Close this and then filter it by distance. And also expand rest. There we go. Okay, I think that should give us uh, a bit so if match is more than zero we say match and then we say close title res and close urls res so right now it should print out that uh release webpack webpack what? yeah okay cool that that looks kind of close so the title is our distance is two here and is just one symbol so it is actually a false uh, match, but I mean, it is closed, right? So it's literally like a couple of symbols here. Yeah, I don't know if there's a closeness in their systems of kanji, maybe in hiragana, and, but uh, like, I mean, the Levenstein is the thing for, which is typically used on the computer text, right? So you can, can you write kanji on computers? I thought they always use the simplified uh, alphabets in there, but uh, you know, I'm not, not an expert, so won't really say anything. Yeah, we got this match, which is near perfect again. So one, okay, you know what? Let's increase the distance less than what? Yeah, less than three. Ah, it's like, oh boy, okay. So I guess if there is, it's less than three and distance more than one, right? Is what we want. So we want it to be not, no, wait, if I say more than one, no, this is wrong. So this is correct, but then basically we have to have some human validation. User configuration parse failed. Okay, I guess we give to just say yeah, what you want. You just want me to say, hey, fields uh, title one. Is that what you want? Will you stop complaining now? There we go. Okay, cool. So no more warnings. And now we have the matches. 
and close title res distance two of epac six four five is there a four six oh okay there's like right so actually there's already found some duplicates in the older episodes that are uh, it's fine okay cool so it actually works uh, as expected and uh what we need to do now is we need to gather those duplicates right and um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say if match is zero then we're just gonna return an empty stream right so i'm just gonna i don't remember if i have a uh, highland here but i probably should add it no i don't have it here so we're gonna say on underscore require highlight okay we got that I'm gonna return an empty array if there is no match and if there is a match we are gonna return so we need to some sort of uh basically human readable message because we want that to be executed as um as a ci thing right that tells us hey you might have some matches so in this case, I guess we want to just uh, say, okay, const call it possible match. And we're gonna say, okay, we got the document, we got the match, match. Uh, your query function is already attaching a scope for the search. Look at the scope property. Does it? Uh, query, um, wait, 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 um, where I am, Probably not thinking straight, but what exactly do you mean? I might be just doing something silly. Query function attaching a score for the search. Look at the score. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Um, that is a good idea. That is a very good idea indeed. So let's see, first of all, uh, let me re, re execute this. So there's, you are correct. Oh, right. I am being an idiot as usual. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, but the people from the uh, <laughs> right uh oh god um i am wait a second let me just uh think for a second so <clears throat> right i'm just spacing out so basically what's is actually should be done here is that because we're using the proper indexing software we are already getting a score that is uh, essentially the distance between the uh, or the matches right so we don't actually have to calculate anything we can just rely on that score and use it to um, figure out the similarity the problem here with this score is is that it's slightly confusing because in this case we get score two which is close to the distance but in this case when the match is just literally one simple difference we actually get a score of nine which is ugh. so uh, let's see elastic lunar elastic lunar um what is this score thing uh, do they have a description of how it actually calculates it i guess they're using the lunar js right so this is what we should look at uh docs so what is the score system that you assign a pdf documentation uh hey i assume this is donna welcome to the stream i think you're the only viewer who has the uh korean username <laughs> all right uh let's see so we got do we have a score description so we got a score score of how closely they match is there any description of how the scoring works so lunar js uh, score searching jump to scoring there we go the score also knows relevance of the documents calculated by bm25 algorithm okay that's already something along with the other factors such as boosts fine that is works fine you don't need to worry much about the details of how BM25 works. To summarize, the more a search term occurs in a single document, the more the term will increase the document's score. Okay. Um, right, so in this case, we actually, uh, you know what we can do? We can remove this filtering and uh, just see what are the other document scores. 
So one, one, one. So if there's no match, it's basically at one. And if there's some matches, it's gonna be at two, which just is a bit weird. I think, the, uh, yes, score is different from the distance. So the Levenstein distance is just distance in symbols. And this BM25 algorithm is, I think it's basically what they do is they tokenize the strings and then see the token matches. At least this is my guess. I am very far away from the whole area of indexing and, uh, you know, text search, ranking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let us see, bag of, okay, so it is bag of words. Yeah, so essentially it, it takes the uh, document title, Redux orchestrated, tokenizes it and then searches for tokens. So in this case, we have the Redux, which means it's like, uh, why is it two actually? That is interesting. All right, I, <laughs> I guess I have no idea how it works. But uh, yeah, so basically this is not, uh, we still wanna do the Levenstein distance, I think, because as you know, as, as much as it's good to have the score, it still doesn't uh, represent the complete match because it's gonna be the tokens, not the words matching. And we want precise, um, precise matches in titles or URLs. So this is what we're gonna go for. Right, so we got the title matches. Uh, we got this, this is distance one. Okay, yeah, so this is fine. Uh, I guess we actually want, Okay, so let's just continue with the current approach. I think it should work fine. So uh, match, I'm just gonna do this. Doc, um, so let's go new document. Uh, that new document is gonna be doc, right? Uh, closest title matches is gonna be, I guess we can just rename that because this makes more sense. And then we're gonna have closest uh, URL matches yeah you don't want the relevance of the document just the distance yeah exactly i mean the like relevance is a good metric but in our case it doesn't really help us that much so possible match match as i guess right because no i guess uh, po okay let's call it possible duplicate is this would be better right uh, and what closes title rest? What? Oh, right. Um, closes title matches, closest euro match. There we go. Okay, so um, ta -da 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 -da. and so we do this. Right, so we got uh, this is our first match. We got match number one, uh, match index one, because we only have one match document by title. And we got these titles that are pretty close. Right, score distance, yeah, that looks fine. And then here we got three matches, but they are actually not quite, it's like, oh man, it's so tough. Do <laughs> I'm just thinking, so the easiest way would obviously to uh, decrease the distance to zero, so to search for precise matches, but uh, this is quirky. Like we're gonna have some hits like this because of, you know, the version differences and just like one symbol that obviously is gonna trigger the Levenstein distance. But I guess we just have to live with that. And I guess, you know what we can just do? Mm, what we can do is we can say, we can add the levels, right? So we can say that if the distance is more than one, or equals one, this is gonna be a warning. And if distance is zero, if it's an exact match, it's gonna be an error, right? So we just throw and say, hey, there's definitely definitely a problem. Okay, um, so what we can do is we can map this and uh, now we can say res and then match level is gonna be res, um, I should put three dots here. Rest distance is zero is um, error. Otherwise is gonna be warning. So I think that should basically do it. And we also have to, um, I guess we could extract that into a separate function actually. Du, du, du. Okay, uh, let's call it const uh, um, with distance, for example, array and this case is gonna be array map down. So, and then actually want some additional things. 
fields because this is going to be from field, right? And um, I mean, I guess we can just do it like this array fields and um, threshold. Fresh. Uh, I always misspell this word threshold. I think that <laughs> this is how you spell it, right? Uh, threshold. There we go. Okay. So um, do, 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 do. in this case, we can just say, there we go. We can just say with distance and then array is going to be title rest. Field is going to be title and threshold is going to be uh, three. And that's, that's going to make our code way nicer to look at. Perfect. With this uh, distance. Array is gonna be URLs res, um, field is gonna be URLs, right? And threshold, that threshold is gonna be five. There we go. Okay, that is way easier to read and uh, way nicer. Right, so we got that stuff. Uh, we got level warning. Okay, so we do this. Um, yeah, and we I guess we can just return uh, this thing, right? Uh, do we actually need? Yeah, I guess we can just do this. So we each no, we can then flat map that, right? Which means that at the end, each over here, it's going to emit duplicates. Uh, no, before that, we need to actually filter. So that result is actually existent. And console log duplicates. There we go. So I think now basically we should only get the duplicate. Uh, I screwed something up. Doc is undefined. Where did I screw it up? 23. Um, where is doc? Oh. Uh, right. It should also pass in the document, the original document. Uh, doc. doc. There we go. It should do it. Uh, and yeah, that works. Okay, so now we have those matches, right? And which means that for each match, we should check uh, if there are any, I mean, it would be nicer if we could, if we could basically somehow sort this um assign the level to the duplicate here as it if, as if it's warning or error hey there stormcrow uh bxjs is the um show i guess that i typically work on it is aiming to teach people to code in in build things in javascript and then building x with javascript it is a podcast, it is a coding lessons, it is a Discord chat where we help each other with JavaScript and stuff like this. Hope that answers the question. Okay, so let us um, level, I guess let's just do the aggregate level and uh, aggregate level and it's gonna be closest title matches and then we're just gonna concat that with closest URL matches. Right, uh, hey Tona, thank you for the cheering. That is really awesome. Okay, uh, let's aggregate, const aggregate level, and it's gonna be array. And uh, essentially we're gonna go through array, map um, each item into item. So we got this item in this array with distance, it gets the uh, match level, right? And then we're gonna reduce that. So uh, we got the previous value, I guess accumulator. And then we got current level, right? And uh, the initial one is gonna be warning. And then if current level is error, return current level, uh, current level. I mean, maybe we can just make it simpler. 
Mm, yeah, you know what? We can just do it this way. New set, right? So we can just wrap it and uh, return a bunch of unique values. Levels. Let's call it aggregate levels. And then it's going to be basically levels. So I think in this case, console log duplicate. So now we should have the duplicate object that have levels. Okay, this warning this also has warning. Okay, and essentially, then we just do for each if duplicate levels uh, includes error, throw new error, possible duplicate uh, detected, right? And before we actually do that, we want to console log duplicate. Otherwise, uh, we just say console log possible duplicate. And then we just uh, console log our I mean, we, we got to come up with some pretty print because reading that in CI is not going to be nice. <laughs> uh, console. Er yeah, I mean, that is that is actually a good idea. Uh, that is more canonical approach, I guess. So we got to create a new new um, markdown document to actually test our things. All right, so well, let me think. Uh, so we got this, so we need to, we need a pretty print then, right? Because reading through the JSON is never nice. Okay, uh, let us create const pretty print duplicate. Let's call it this way. And right, so what do we, uh, so in this case, I'm gonna call it pretty print duplicate. And in this case, we are gonna say, right, so we have this structure, right? Copy this, paste it over here. And we're gonna say, Okay, console log. Maybe I should install some sort of a. But I guess for CI it wouldn't matter if we have any pretty printing or anything. So I guess console log works as well. Okay, we we, we I guess we can just move this possible duplicate over here as well. Possible duplicate. Right. Uh, console log. Original. I guess we. You know what? We can just probably format this like this and uh, just use a nice templated literal. Okay, original documents um, title. So it's gonna be dupe new documents. No, wait, that's not original new documents uh, title, right? And then we're just gonna be like dupe new documents URLs existing documents matching title uh print diff is nice but i mean i don't really need to print diff right i just need to print the uh the new document and then i need to print the there's also the problem that this is using the um font coloring which won't work in ci environments so it's going to be hard to read that if we run it in like travis or something i would rather do the plain text stuff. Okay, and then we got to, um, I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say dupe uh, closest title matches, m uh, matches, map, match into string literal, and it's gonna be, um, right, it's gonna be item title, and it's gonna be item URLs, and we're gonna join all of that with slash n and then two space bars. I think that should be good. And then we're gonna do the same for um, matching URLs. Closest, uh, what is it, the name of it? Closest URL matches. Okay, I think that should 
pretty printed nicely we're gonna see in a second uh no i screwed something up uh what are you not liking there i uh oh whoop. right of course yeah why am i why am i doing this to myself i should type correctly <laughs> There we go. Okay, um, that is uh, kind of getting there. First of all, let's add some more spacing. No, don't freaking add. Yep. God damn it. Sometimes prettier can be a bit annoying. Um, I guess we can do this, right? So how does this look? Possible duplicate, new document, webpack. Um, yeah, okay, you know what? We need some more facing here because this looks a bit too condensed to my liking okay how about now all right so if we actually stretch this okay this looks more readable right and we can immediately say that there is no matches because the urls are different and even though the titles are close uh, we should remove this so basically this should be oh boy how do i how do i go about this so i guess i just go dupe closest uh, but length more than zero and we're gonna print this otherwise it's gonna be empty and uh, there's just gonna be a lot of empty space and the same goes for this i think that should do it you know, it's not going to be very pretty because there's going to be like a bunch of imp. Nah, I, ugh, that's terrible. Let's not do this. Figure out a better approach. I mean, I guess we can just extract this into a separate functions. Um, yeah, why not? Pretty print uh, by title. And say dupe. Uh, well, that is not what I want to. <laughs> okay. Right, and if there is dupe closest, uh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna copy this title length is zero. I guess I can just do this, right? But no, not this exclamation mark. Then we're just gonna return empty string. Otherwise, I'm gonna take this and be like, return this. There we go. I think that should do it. Okay, and in this case, we just be like pretty print by title dupe. And we do the same for uh, existing documents. Uh, const pretty print by, uh, I am writing it in the wrong place. Right, uh, const pretty pr print by uh, URLs is what I wanna say, right? and uh, return return there we go right and again if this return uh thank you very much okay we got this we got this uh, why are you red pretty print by urls dupe okay i think that should be okay. Yeah, that looks way nicer. Uh, maybe we add some more spacing over here. Cool. Um, right, so I guess, yeah, so we should now, first of all, let me commit that unless, you know, so that I don't screw anything up anymore. Commit um, basic dupe search script there you go done so now we need to actually just check that it works so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna uh copy path I'm gonna wait what yep come on i'm gonna create an episode 39 right I'm gonna copy this i'm gonna be like okay so i'm gonna leave this here i'm gonna leave i don't know htm here for example also the twitter urls are yeah whatever and i'm gonna well we're gonna kill the releases at all 
and we are gonna kill the tips and tricks. So I just need a bunch of things and we need to test if they are gonna trigger the errors, right? Uh, WebSockets, a conceptual, not so conceptual, um, shallow dive. Let's, let's call it this way. Ably WebSockets, shallow dive. So just so that it actually differs from that, right? So in theory, if we now run our script, there is my check dupes. And there we go. So it throws an error. And, oh, right. We actually have to pre print that as well, right? <laughs> That is a good idea. Pretty print uh, duplicate. There we go. All right. Uh, so it actually now throws because there is an error. Uh, but I guess I don't know. Do we actually want to throw uh, before we print out everything? So here's the thing. Um, like I would want to see the whole output. Um, and maybe. Man, how is how you would go about uh, let me think. I don't like. I don't like the fact that it's gonna be like you know a bunch of things. I would prefer something like a table maybe. But uh, yeah, no. I guess table won't really work in CI environment. So all right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We can. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. So I guess we won't throw an error now, but rather. Um, yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretty print all the time. And then I'm going to say that we are going to have uh, let should throw. No, I'm not. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to actually catch it. That's the thing, right? So I'm going to say that it should throw through if we have anything uh, should throw through. And then once we're done, I'm going to if should throw. I'm going to explain in a second why I want to throw and not catch it. Throw Arrow new error. Um, that, that come on. Uh, da, 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 da. Possible duplicates detected. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, the final idea is to put that script into the CI environment, right? And the idea is that if it throws an error and if it fails in CI, then the CI like Travis CI or whatever will say that the build has failed. So this is why I just want to throw it and not uh, catch it, right? Okay, cool. So now we have all the prints and I guess in this case, we should probably, probably possible, um, right, so we should do this. We should take this duplicate levels includes error and say, um, right, so I guess we should do it like this, possible duplicate, so if includes error, dupe, if it's error, then it's gonna be exact match detected, and I guess we can be like exact match detected, there we go. All right, so now we can actually see where the exact match is and it detects it correctly. Two matches and this one is also exact match. Yep, that seems to be working. And we got three matches out of four links, so it works perfectly fine. Cool. Um, links remove the last one that is, oh, you know what I am thinking? I am thinking that we also need to actually is the thing do we actually need No, I think that's fine. Okay. I'm just thinking if we need to sort the uh, the files as in you know, they are kind of sorted anyway, but just to be sure, it might be a good idea to sort them anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, you know, I think it's fine where we're gonna see <laughs> we're gonna... no. Right, let's let's do it correctly and let's just sort them because you never know how the uh, CI environment will behave, right? So what we want to do is we want to take this read dear array array mods and uh, we actually want to sort the files, right? So here is our files console log files. Uh, we want to sort them 
a b and we want to sort them i'm always forgetting that function mdn string um compare there is a com string comparison function that works local compare i think is it yeah okay i am always also forgetting how it works exactly a lot yeah so we local compare b a local compare b there we go so uh the question is how is it gonna sort i guess <laughs> Let me think for a second. So if we run this now, how is it sorted? This is sorted exactly how we want it. Okay, so this is what we want to run. All right, um, I guess we could just do that, right? And we also need to do this on episode. So here, essentially, uh, map array into sorted array right so that you know just to be sure that wherever whatever the environment we run this in we would actually get the links sorted properly and not rely on the uh what do you call it on the file system right because who knows what it's going to be and who knows how it's going to sort them okay cool um right uh, whoops it add dots so what did I added the sorting and we added the okay add file sorting and throw uh file sorting pretty print all dupes throw on errors right we got that so basically what is left to do is to set up the uh CI some sort of CI I guess Travis CI or something like this uh, that would do a bunch of things. First of all, it would um, run the script on pull requests. It will either throw or not, basically, we already did that. And then it should also uh, generate the index. So we still have our tools generate full index, right? Which produces our index JSON, which we should publish somewhere so that we can later on use it for searching um, documents in the front end. Okay, but I think we're basically done for today. So we're like 99% done with this repository. We just need to set up CI. And once this is done, we could switch. So we are, we're done with this search bit, right? So we would uh, trigger webhook. We would, yeah. So we need some additional working on the um, website repository, but I think we would be done with a weekly repository and that would simplify my things a lot. So if you guys have any questions with regards to uh, anything we did here today, feel free to send them into the chat right now. If not, then uh, thank you very much for watching. I, as I said, I'm gonna be streaming on Wednesday and on Friday this week. We're gonna see how that ends up going. There's also gonna be BXJS weekly as usual on Saturday. Uh, and there's gonna be gaming streams tomorrow and on Thursday. So if you're Interested in Darksiders 3 and uh, what do you call it? X4, I think, coming out this week as well. Stick around. Um, once again, I, I don't know. We'll see how all of this goes. Maybe we'll do a longer stream on Wednesday. Um, again, I'm going to stream likely during the day. I really want to finish this because it's like, um, yeah, it's, I, I want to have a BXGS website, fancy one with uh, hooks and everything. Also, uh, we might use now Shell for deploying it because they um, recently introduced a new free tier for open source software that is incredibly generous. So I'm thinking of moving all my websites to them because like you cannot beat this pricing. Like just, uh, where's the pricing? Why is it at the bottom? There we go. So it, it gives you some pretty crazy things as in you get like 100 gigs of months of bandwidth and thousand serverless builds thousand function invocations if you need them and 100 gigs of sources and backups and maximum file of 100 megs this is like more than you would ever need for a basic website so maybe instead of using travis ci we'll just use the site we're going to see how that goes also you know if you have any preferences do let me know we can have a look at whatever you guys want to uh, see me use basically but uh, yes, um, I think that will be it for today. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for your support, cheering and all that kind of stuff as usual. 
Uh, if you missed the stream, you can watch it on YouTube uh, as always. Um, yes, it is. Um, I mean, I think watching streams is always more fun because you can actually interact with people. So once again, thank you very much for uh, watching and following and chatting with me. You know, it's always fun. And uh, yeah, um, you can find everything that is done on YouTube, on GitHub or whatever. Come to our Discord chat and talk to us there. Once again, huge thanks for your support. And I see you on um, either gaming stream tomorrow or on a coding stream or Wednesday. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.